Now from the 12 News I team, how hot is too hot when it comes to Arizona's prisons? The I team's Erica Stapleton obtained temperature logs from every prison across the state. And what she found raises questions about safety and standards inside the Department of Corrections. It's January. You're probably wondering why we're talking about hot temperatures. We requested all of these records from the Department of Corrections back in September, but it took them until December to turn them all over and no one there would answer any questions about what we found. There's an expectation of extreme heat in the summer. This is Arizona, like we all know how hot it is here. How Arizona's Department of Corrections handles that extreme heat, not so much. Inmates and their loved ones first started complaining to the I-team last summer that some of their prison cells were too hot. So the I-team wanted to know how hot and requested July 2023 temperature logs for all Arizona prisons. Here's what we found. In all prisons, the highest temperatures ranged from 88 degrees to 111 degrees inside. That top temp was recorded at the men's prison in Kingman. Perryville Women's Prison in Goodyear had the second highest, with certain cells hitting as high as 109 degrees. There were 11 days in July where cells at Perryville hit triple digits. Lewis Prison in Buckeye also had multiple days where certain cells temped in the 90s, once hitting 100 degrees, according to the logs. And some facilities, like Douglas and Yuma, consistently recorded cooler temperatures inside, most days in the 70s and 80s. Well, it doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me at all. John Fabricius saw a lot in his 15 years incarcerated in the Department of Corrections, getting out in 2018. And in that time, I was at nine different complexes. Including the prison in Kingman, which had the hottest cells in July. It's really hot in those buildings. It's analogous to locking yourself in your attic or something like that in the summer. I mean, it's hot. John now serves as the executive director for Arizonans for Transparency and Accountability in Corrections. Because the watchers can't watch themselves. We uncovered more than just hot temperatures. The logs show that most facilities checked all temperatures twice a day, in the morning and afternoon. But the records all looked different, some handwritten and hard to read. It appeared that the prison in Safford only recorded outdoor temperatures, and the warden at La Palma Correctional Center in Eloy admitted they only started doing temperature logs in August and had nothing to show for July. Then there was this phenomenon. Another unit at the Kingman prison had the exact same temperature readings down to the decimal point on 11 different days. For example, one dorm area was recorded repeatedly to be 90.2 degrees in the mornings, but each afternoon, the temperatures would be different, sometimes a 20 degree swing cooler. It didn't make sense, and neither the Department of Corrections nor the GEO Group, the company contracted to run the prison, would explain it. We should all know exactly what's going on in there, what's happening, and we don't. We took our findings to three other outside sources. No human being should be asked to live under those kinds of conditions. It's unacceptable and it's inhumane. That is not safe. That is not healthy. Including Noah Barth, the prison monitoring director with the Pennsylvania Prison Society. He also consulted with Arizona's new independent prison oversight commission. What do you make of the record keeping overall? A lack of uniformity just raises some questions about how they're going about monitoring temperatures. The department has not answered when we've asked what they consider to be excessive heat or any of the other questions we've asked about our findings in their temperature logs. We did find this department order from 2019, listing a maximum indoor temperature at 80 degrees. That means if you look at those July 2023 temperature logs, every state prison that recorded indoor temperatures would have violated these standards last summer. It seemed that some of them were hotter than others. When you don't have consistency of policy, then you can't have consistency of outcomes and expectations. Wouldn't it just be easier to get functioning air conditioners. And we have those. I mean, we're converting HVAC systems all over the state. We have been for the last few years. State Prison Director Ryan Thornell sat down with us in mid-July, before the department provided any of their logs confirming triple-digit temps inside cells. For the past six months, the I-teams asked more than a dozen times for a new interview with Director Thornell. Each time, the department's media relations team declined or didn't respond. I'm sorry that you didn't get a clear answer in the way that you and the public deserve. State Representative Annalise Ortiz is on the state's Independent Prison Oversight Commission, established last year. The purpose of this oversight commission was to foster more accountability and transparency, and it sounds like that didn't happen in this case.
And guys, you know, we get a lot of feedback when we do stories like these. And the bottom line is it comes down to safety, not just for the women sure. and the men who are incarcerated, but for the guards too. And remember that these are taxpayer funded facilities. So you want to make sure everything's working because if it's not, then that's wasted money. Look, we know the triple digits aren't far away. What's the timeline for the air conditioning systems in the prisons? We know at least for Perryville Women's Prison in Goodyear that that process is already underway. There is a state contract that's currently out there. It's under evaluation and a contractor will be selected, but the timeline of when they'll finish is up to the contractor. So that's still unclear, although the department has said by the end of 2024, which means they could be going through another summer yeah. without you know, properly functioning. Yeah, which is also hard HVAC on the staff equipment. members. Yeah, sure. exactly. and you're going to have more tomorrow. Yes, that's correct. We'll have more tomorrow and we'll break down that timeline a little further. Okay, Thank Erica, you. thanks.